and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Clusterfuck Review 2, The Quickening. Why The Quickening? Because it's going to be longer, much more complicated, and probably a complete mess by the end. Also, it's a not very good sequel to the original. Hmm. <laughs> well, hopefully it's not as bad as The Quickening, but... The quickening was a mess, and this has been a bit of a mess organising, so whatever. We've got the pop, metal, rock, and we're not entirely sure sections. We're going to have some honourable mentions for all those sections, and also some honourable mentions for sections we weren't... we didn't have enough to actually say about. Oh, there's also going to be a blues section. So, five sections, sporadically uploaded as and when we get to them. We're going to be covering August, September and some of October because we've got a backlog as long as a whale's dick. Or your Steam library. Um, my Steam library is probably longer. If you actually write all the names of the games in Steam in Ed's Steam library back to back, this still will be long enough to reach from here to the moon. Possibly. I mean, I've got a thousand titles, so... And some of them are ridiculously long, so maybe. I mean, ridiculously long, as in, you know, the average of distance between here and the moon, or approximately three light novel titles. What? You know what light novel titles are like? It's like, well, I'm... I can't believe that my best friend is actually the president of USA and he wants my dick, or other similar titled things. <laughs> it probably actually is as I would called that, it wouldn't surprise me. I, I would like to say, considering the light novels that do exist... Ugh. Kind of a parody of themselves at this stage of their titles. Pretty much. Well, there's a lot of them probably do that simply because it's just a thing to do. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, getting on to... Basically... What we're doing is trying not to talk about this piece of shit of an album. Yeah. So, first section, the pop section. I pretty much said, yes, this is going to be the first thing talked about because I need to get this off my chest. And Jesus dick, is this a horrible album. Self-titled album from Fifth Harmony. Fuck! I... Ah, uh, okay. First things first. I was hoping... I was praying, I was pleading with whatever mystical force might be in control of this universe that this might be a similar experience to the one I had with Rainbow by Kesha, because that was an amazing album. There is not a bad song on that album, and even the weak song, and it is limited to one weak song, was amazing when taken in its own right. That's why it's a 5 out of 5 album. It would be a 6 out of 5 if if that one particular song was a bit stronger. But as it stands, it's an amazing album. You should all listen to it. But no! This album! This album! I need to compose myself. So, Pierce, please take it away. Well, uh... I was listening through this album again earlier, just kind of refresh myself on it. In about 17 seconds, it made me want to vomit, and then I actually got saved because YouTube decided to put an advert up in the middle of it, and it was actually better than the album itself, so... It was advertising that some kind of hair product or something, and it still sounded better than the album. <laughs> I mean, the absolute benefit of this album is it actually is just over half an hour long, which is you know, only a very small part of your life to never have to, you know, care about again. And, uh, I mean, it's possible that in half an hour you might not actually want to or be able to kill yourself, so... I, I mean, this... Now, if it was just generic pop, then it might be... As it is. It's just... It's just so... rote. It's fun. No, 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 here's the thing, though. It's worse than simply being generic because it's very insidious. Because... It frames itself as being fairly innocent in sound. But there is this veneer of sleaziness running throughout all of the lyrics. It's like the Steel Panther album we reviewed. But none of the fun parts! <laughs> Just the sexual obsessiveness. Now, 
you you may think that I'm overblowing things, but if you just listen to some of the songs, like Make You Mad, which who am I? I've got a rant lined up for that, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, it's just generally, if it was just generic pop, that would actually make it better than what it is. What it is, is the really irritating sort that churns itself out and has horrifying connotations overlaying it. I mean, the opening song, Down, um, the chorus line, as long as you're holding me down, I'm gonna be loving you. What in the name of Jimi Hendrix's ghost am I meant to read into that other than a disturbing desire to be submissive and not in that dom subsense in the sense of shunting feminism back a hundred years? I can't believe Robin Thicke got split into four girls and then became a new artist. I thought it was five girls. I I'm just looking at the album cover and I can quite clearly see four people. That's why being called Fifth Harmony, it always weirded me out. Uh, I think um, one of them left because... Funnily enough, she was complaining about her being over-sexualised. The best thing she's ever going to do in her life. Uh, let me just investigate. Yeah, uh, Camilla Cabello uh, left in December last year. She's probably just looking back on this album release now and thinking, thank fuck I left. Yeah. And, uh, and then... Uh, and I will get to this. Then you've got Make You Mad. I mean, that's not the following song, but I have to... I have to rant and rage about this. Not rant and rave, rant and rage. <laughs> Make You Mad. Make You Mad has the sexual politics of a Viking attack. Also, someone decided just to add, like, some kind of bass drum rhythm over what sounds like a, a really shitty kid's xylophone. So, it's, even musically, it sounds awful. Yeah, musically, it sounds awful. And, now, here's the thing. Um, the, the main chorus line is, No one will love you as much as I do. That is not a good line coming from anyone, male or female. It's not a good line to hear. It's a post-breakup line. Or, alternatively, an abusive relationship line. Um, I, I don't get why this song isn't being called out for essentially having the same approach as any male singer essentially going, saying that. I mean, I hope that you know, maybe it's not being called out because nobody's actually listening to it, but I know I'll be wrong. Mm. I mean, the only explanation I can give is the reason it's not being called out, aside from no one listening to it, which is very unlikely, is that it's because women are singing it. Possibly, yeah. Because we have this weird fear of calling out women for engaging in a mentality that we'd call men out for. Hmm. Well, there we go. Uh, you don't want to call out women right now. You know, all the Tumblr feminists will get busy. Well, you say that's a that like it's a bad thing, but bear in mind that Spoonie got big because of people bitching at him for complaining about Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, but I think that's a kind of a different thing. Does hating on someone's you know, taste in video games is a bit different to uh, activating Tumblr triggering, which is a whole kind of mess in itself. Mm. Especially when it comes to gender politics. Especially when it comes to Tumblr gender politics, which is a completely different thing to regular gender politics. Fair point. Uh, but... Yeah, the the opening lines of that song are essentially framing the singers like the proverbial scorpion. It is in their nature to use and abuse the subject. It's very disturbing. Uh, there's not one song I can praise on this album. I, there are some songs that are much worse than others. It's It's not so much a what is the worst song. It's what is the least shit song. And honestly, I, I don't even know where to start that. I mean, Don't Say You Love Me is tolerable musically, but the message has been done a billion times. Um, I mean, at first I considered giving praise to the last song, 
But even that is nothing but a tired, washed out, old and busted formula that is common for this genre. Well, this is like what I was saying earlier about it sounding like generic pop, because a lot of it sounds like the exact same thing you can hear like dozen other artists right now. Yeah. I, the... We actually had a video on a while ago, because... Well, it wasn't me, it was more so anyway. Well, one of the builders in my house had it on. And uh, yeah, it, it, half a song sounded exactly the goddamn same, despite being different artists. It's like, this is modern pop. Everything sounds identical. Yeah. It's like, why? I... The, the only thing I have left to say is, fuck this album in its entirety! It's just... Don't bother with it, it's not worth a try. In fact, maybe do bother with it just so you can see how bad it is. But don't pay for it! Maybe you'd like it. I mean, if you like it, all to you, but why? <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, Here, here's the thing. I'm going to take from another reviewer. The only opinion that really matters is your own, but you do need to be able to explain why you like something. I... Whenever it comes to Devin Townsend, I am always able to explain why I like his stuff. And even, in one instance, why I didn't like one of his songs. So, if you do like this, please inform us as to why! Because we cannot find any reason! I, I mean, I'd give this a score of like... I, I, but I'd give this a get the fuck out of my face out of five! <laughs> Because it isn't. I give I I give this as a the cover art has a kind of retro aesthetic appealing to it to it, but nothing else is worth having. Kind of score. Yeah. Uh, oh, there is one backhanded compliment I can give it, in that there is a rap verse in the first song which at least maintains the subject matter, which I have never seen in any other fucking pop song that features a rap verse. Except maybe California Girls, but less said about that, the better. Um, but yeah, just, just, fuck this album. <sighs> I feel better for that. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, really, unless, you know... We like generic pop music, and if I like generic pop music, there's probably like a dozen other artists that come out in the last year that do it better. So why would I recommend this to you? In, yeah. In fact, goes into you know Anastasia or Kesha or Rihanna or Beyonce or whoever the hell you want. They're all better than this. I've not been a fan of all of those. Well, Kesha, um, Kesha's album I wouldn't classify as a pop album. That's actually more of a country blues sort of fair. Mm, and, well, country blues is one of my sort of... There are odd, odd artists in that genre that I'll find myself gravitating towards. But yeah, just leave this album in the dust. Yeah, I mean, it goes into anything else. It goes into the sound of geese meeting or whatever. It probably sounds more pleasant. <laughs> in fact, the last thing I will say is this album, this album... SHOULD BE BURIED ALONG WITH THE E.T. CARTRIDGES! Well, as soon as you said buried, I immediately knew you were about to mention E.T. <laughs> anyway, let's move along! We build bridges.